Hello friends and welcome to Kids Church Elementary. If you are in preschool, you're in luck. We have something for you. It's Kids Church Preschool. Go ahead and find that and you can click on that. For my elementary friends, I need you just to grab your Bible. We have our adventure Bible, but you guys can grab whatever Bible you have. Grab it and get ready for our lesson because it's going to be a good one today. Happy February, friends! Happy February! It's uh, been so dry outside. I know, and I'm hoping we're coming to the end of winter, so I'm hoping, you know, I have my Valentine's scarf on for this month. I got my... I see, I, I love that. Yeah. I like it. Frill. It's very pretty, very pretty. So. I like your glasses, actually. I know. Yeah, my, some of my friends don't recognize me when I wear my glasses. It's exactly. whenever it's really dry outside, I have to wear them because my contacts don't work very well with dry. Mm. So I just want to tell you guys now, if you ever see them, it's probably dry outside. It's probably dry. And I don't wear contacts, so it doesn't matter. So. <laughs> um, I'm excited. We have a new month. We have a new focus this month of love and heart love. is all about kindness kindness because that has to do with love right you gotta it be does. kind to, to love exactly and so kindness is defined as showing others that they are valuable by how you treat them so that takes it a step further because usually we think of kindness as using our words like last week we talked about our words yeah. so but this is an actual action mm -hmm. yeah yeah because it's it's all about the things we do for other people i personally feel like what we do for other people is the most important thing we could do. Well, because it's an example of Jesus. Which, exactly. Wait, we're, we're going to get into um, that. Sorry, sorry. We're we get, get so excited. That. So I know we do. Now, we are going to be talking about a book in the Bible, and we talked about this last week, so if you missed last week, it's okay. We've got you covered. We're going to recap it again. That was written by a guy named Saul Paul. And so if you don't know who Saul Paul is, let me enlighten you. So my friend Saul, because he started off as Saul and then later on becomes Paul, so you know that he transforms because it was it Saul and then Paul. Yeah, Paul is good. Saul is not necessarily bad, but he thought that his way was the right way. He didn't believe that Jesus was who he said he was. He did not believe that Jesus came on earth to save us so we could have a relationship with God. And so he was like, no, there's someone else coming. Jesus isn't who he says he is. And he got really upset at those who would say that because he's like, no, you're wrong and you're spreading misinformation. Because in his heart, he loved God. Yeah. It wasn't like he was against God. He was so for God. Yeah, so it's, it's hard sometimes because when people do bad things, sometimes they have good motives. I know. It's, you know, one of those complicated parts of life, but he he would do unkind things, and one time he was on his way to go be unkind again. And then all of a sudden he got this bright, flashing, shining light, and he got blind, and he heard this voice that says, why are you persecuting me? And it was God. And he's like, hey, stop hurting my people, because, you know. Jesus was right. And he was like, oh my gosh, I'm so silly. So after that point, he was able to see again and he completely changed. And now he is Paul. So a lot of the times you'll either read Saul or Paul, if it's in the New Testament, Saul and Paul, same guy. Yeah. And and what was funny through all of this is I love, he loved God the whole time. Yeah. He, he, he totally loved God. He totally wanted to do the right thing. It was just it, understanding who Jesus was. Yes, that's what it was. It's when Jesus came into the mix, that just shook everything up and yeah. changed it all. So after he started following Jesus, he traveled everywhere. I mean, he was on his feet traveling, setting up churches. And we talked about this last week that, you know, uh, back then a church was like a micro church like we have now. Mm -hmm. is, where it's just a bunch of people come in one house and they talk and they watch a, watch, read a letter or do something. And that's what Paul would do. He's he'd go and get a group of people together, he'd tell them about Jesus, and he's like, all right, you're a church now. Now you, you guys go are going to tell other people about Jesus, and he never just, like, left, like, started something mm -hmm. and then just left it. If you ever, like, started something and then completely left it, somebody like started a hobby and never... Yeah, or like if you like are, are building with a group of people and like you guys all have this vision together and it's great and then you leave and then you come back and all of a sudden there's like chaos because no one's following the directions anymore. It's easy to forget the directions. Yeah. It's easy to forget from the beginning when mm -hmm. you start something to, to continue following. Yeah, and so instead of him traveling back because he traveled hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles on foot. On a ship. So, yeah. Too. Yeah, so it wasn't like it was fast travel, so mm -hmm. he yeah. would write letters to be like, hey, 
heard this stuff is going on. Remember what I taught about. <laughs> and, and that's what it was. Is, I mean, you think about that. We as adults, we still have to be reminded to use kind of words yeah. to do certain things. And we, we at least get to read it. It's always here for us. They didn't have that with them. They just kind of had to. There was no them. Bible. Yeah. There was nothing. It was just word of mouth. It mm -hmm. was encouraging. It was, remember when Paul was here, he said this about yeah. Jesus. And, and that type of thing. And, and then if you ever play telephone, like when once someone shares something and then another person shares something, sometimes it gets misconstrued. So Saul, Saul, Saul Paul would write these things to just kind of help clear the air. Yeah, so he writes to Ephesus, one of the cities, mm -hmm. and he talks about kindness. So yeah. let's check it out. Yes, so we are going to go to the book, as Miss Bonnie said, of Ephesians. So that's in our New Testament. If you guys have your Bibles with you, I told you earlier to go grab them. Uh, the Adventure Bible is great, but any Bible you have is a great Bible. Yeah, it that's is. That's what I just got to say. Uh, so we got the uh, table of contents. Every Bible has one. Everyone looks different. Everyone has different page numbers and stuff. So you have an Old Testament and you have a New Testament. And in the New Testament, it goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. So we're going to go to that page number. So you look For at your me, page number. For me, that's 1295. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And the book of Ephesians is a very small book. Yes. There are only six chapters in it. You could definitely miss it if you just... Uh, I have before, so I'm going to the big four, you said? Uh, yes, we're going to go to the big four. That's chapter four. And then verse... Verse 32, so little 32. Oh, it's the last verse in that chapter. Oh, perfect. Oh, I went too far. Okay. You guys ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, go. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Good. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. So, wow. Okay, so before that verse, which really knocks you on your mm -hmm. bottom, uh, this whole section, Paul was writing at how to live as someone who follows Jesus. Yeah. So this little piece is just one piece in a lot of what he's saying. But can we break that down a bit? Because that's all, there's a lot in that one sentence. Yeah. So let's start off. So be kind. We know kind is showing people that they're valuable by how we treat them. Right. So it's treating people well. Now, I, I want to make a distinction here. It's not the value we put on them, it's the value God puts on them. Yeah. Because everyone is valuable. Mm -hmm. um, whether we think someone is nice or cool or whatever, it doesn't matter. No, no. Uh, it's God created them, and if he created them, they are valuable. Yeah, and so it's it's showing that they're valuable. Right, Yeah. showing that. Okay, so be kind, show people that you're val they're valuable. And be compassionate. So showing compassion, being compassionate means that you think about the other person as if they were valuable, as if they were made from God. And understanding how they feel. Yeah. That, that compassion isn't just a be kind, that compassion is, oh, she got a bad grade on her test. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. I understand. I've done that before. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other. So saying, hey, you don't have to pay for what you did that was wrong, which is hard. And the next part is the key part. It says we have to do this because just as in Christ, God forgave you. We forgive other people because we are forgiven. Well, and that's what we've talked about that. The New Testament is all about Jesus coming, mm -hmm. dying on a cross, and he did that so that we could be forgiven. Yeah. So we aren't kind and compassionate and loving just to be kind, compassionate, loving. We are kind and compassionate and loving because Jesus does that to us. Yeah. And because he forgives us everything we have done and values us, we want to turn around and do that to other people. Yeah, because think about it. When you make a mistake and you ask for forgiveness, you want that, don't you? Yes, I do. When I go to someone, I go, I'm so sorry, I made a mistake. Yeah. Please forgive me. So if that happens for us, what do you think about other people? Yeah. That's part of the, the compassionate aspect is thinking like, oh, yeah, if I was in their shoes, I would want the same exact thing. Yeah, compassion and empathy are really close, aren't they? They, are really they, close. they, they really are very close. When you empathize with someone, you uh, there's that phrase you walk walk a mile in someone else's shoes. Yeah, where where you really understand where they're coming from, and that's the thing. That's why that forgiveness is important. Is we don't know where other people are coming from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so things are happening in people's lives, and sometimes we we just need to give them another word, grace. Yes. 
No, I agree. So our question this week is, what does kindness look like? So what does it look like to show others that they're valuable by how you treat them? How do you treat people? Mm. How should you not, how do you treat people? How should you? If you're working on it right now, maybe not like because, how do you treat people? Because, you know, and I think that that's an important point is yeah. this is all an ongoing process. Yeah. None of us are perfect at walking with Jesus. None of us have arrived and have that award. Mm -hmm. We're all slowly getting more and more like who Jesus created us to yeah. be. And, and how cool is that, that we all get to work on something together? Like we're all working individually on ourselves, but like it's a collective thing where we're all doing it together. Like we all know that we're not gonna like hit that, you know, the top level 100% of kindness. Ding, ding, but we all know that we're all working towards it. Right. And I just, I think and that's really neat. And I think that that's where that forgiving each other and compassion to one another is important. Yes. Because as we all want to follow Jesus and we all want to be kind, we're going to miss the mark once in a while. And we need to give each other grace. Yeah, because so. we all we all miss the mark. Missing the mark, another word we use sometimes is sin. sin. We all sin. Every single one of us have done something that is against what God wants or it hurts others. Yeah, for sure. But it's all about acknowledging it, saying, oh gosh, I did that. Second, it's it's asking for forgiveness by not only the person that you hurt, or you know, it's also God because you're like, hey, God, I, I hurt you by hurting someone else, and, and then it's accepting that forgiveness. Yeah, I do that a couple times a day at least, mm -hmm. and then at night, I'm, I when I stop and I lay down, I'm often like, okay, God, what did I do today that I, where did I, you know, really analyze my day so that I make sure that I'm covering that, yeah. that I'm making sure that the next day I go back to that person and go. You know what? I think I was a little rude yesterday. Can mm -hmm. you forgive me? You know, because I want to make sure that I'm continually moving forward. And moving forward isn't perfection. Moving yeah. forward is getting up off the ground when you blow it and moving forward. Yeah. yeah. So, well, would you pray for our friends this week? Okay. I think we all need some prayer to, to be yeah. able to do this month of kindness. I love it. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you so much for my friends who are watching this Sunday. Uh, or maybe they're watching a different day whatever day they're watching. Thank you for having them here with us. Uh, Lord, I just pray for kindness that we are, as we look at it this month, uh, we look to ourselves and see how do we treat other people and where is our goal? Where are, Where's that spot that we may never be able to fully obtain, but we're always gonna reach for. Because Lord, we know that we can't be perfect, but you can help us reach those goals. We love you in Jesus' name and pray. Amen. Amen. All right, my friends, we'll see you in a bit at the application. Okay? See ya! Bye! Hey guys, it's Miss Allie. And it's Miss Bonnie! And today we are helping out at the drive through Food Pantry, and we have a mission for you guys at home. So during the month of February, we are doing a food drive. We are going to send home a bag with you and you guys get to fill it up and then bring it back because all of the food you guys gather will be delivered by these wonderful people who are with us today and they're gonna give it to people who need it. So grab a bag from us or if you don't come to church in person, go ahead and look at fcchb.com and you'll find a link in the children's area to the list of food that they can bring in. Yeah. So definitely check it out and let's help out some good people. We can all do it together. All right, see ya. Bye guys. Hey friends, one of my favorite things to do is celebrate Jesus. So hop up on your feet, get ready, because we are going to dance, we're going to sing, and we're going to celebrate Jesus. His love will never quit. His love will never run away. Even when I get upset. Oh,
Hey friends, how are you? We're back for our application. Yes, we are. Um, so this whole month is all about kindness. Now, we have a verse. Each month there's what we call a memory verse. Yes. And the goal is to try and memorize it. it I don't often get it verbatim. I don't often get it exact, but I get it close. This month's memory verse comes from Colossians 3.12. Ooh, okay. And it is, you are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy, kindness, as they were clothed. Do not be proud, be gentle and patient. So that is a great verse and I love it. It really is. And I would encourage you guys, as you guys do this activity, talk about what it means with your family. Yes. Because we love memorizing verses and we love yes. knowing what God has to say for our lives. But what's really important is we know what that means for us. Yes, because it does no good to just memorize words. Big yeah. deal. So what? I can even I can tell you like all the prepositions from middle school. Do I know what that means? Absolutely not. But I can list them all off. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get some paper. I have some yellow paper. Mm -hmm. it, it can be white paper, it doesn't matter. Cut it into strips, and then what you're gonna do is write one or two words on each one of these. For example, in the first one you could put you are, and then the next one, God's chosen. Uh, and then mix them up and take turns putting them in order. Ooh, so you can even make it like a race. I often love a good race and a good mm -hmm. challenge where I pull out that timer on my phone. So yeah. And to have fun with it. The other one is to lay it all out, say it as a family, and then take a word out. Yeah. And see how many words you can take out yeah. and still be able to see it. That is so much fun. So. Mm -hmm. So that is our activity. So some memory verse work. So, and if you guys do this as a family, we'd love to see a video of it. Yeah. Send us a picture, send us a clip. Uh, we'd love to see how you guys do it in your family yeah. and what you do. So what are some questions that we can ask while we're doing this? Uh, would you rather be described as being nice or being kind? Ooh. So we know what kind is, yes. but what is nice? So we say kindness is showing value mm -hmm. through your actions. Through your actions. So, so maybe look up a definition of nice and figure out what the difference is. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. What's something kind someone did for you lately? Mm -hmm. So think about a few things. Mm -hmm. What's something kind you did for someone else lately? Ooh, making sure you're flipping that. Mm -hmm. Like your kindness train. Kindness train. Often our first response isn't always to show kindness. How can you do that to remind yourself to respond with kindness first? So what do you do to remind yourself, hey, oh, got to be kind? Especially like with your siblings, if they frustrate oh, you. Yeah. What, what helps you when you are kind with them? What helps you be kind first? And with winter and being around each other more indoors and at home learning and all that fun, it's easy to not be kind. So yeah, yeah I talked with some friends about that and we talked about how can we work on that. So that's, so a, that's an ongoing issue. Oh yeah, you've never arrived with that. No. It just, no, no, yeah, I agree. Uh, why is kindness important? How mm -hmm. do you feel when someone is kind to you versus when someone is unkind to you? So what does it feel when they're kind? How does it feel when they're unkind? And I think that goes back to the verse about empathy and compassion, mm -hmm. understanding, oh, I felt that way when you weren't kind, and then you're able to go, oh, well, I don't want to make someone else feel that way. Exactly. Yeah, and that's, that's a, a, that's a hard question. thing to, to fully get, and it's definitely that's definitely something that you'll get once you start getting older. Right. So just remember that if you're not quite there yet. It, but it's really just continuing yes. that conversation. Talking working about on it. it. Yes. Just because you don't understand something doesn't mean you can't work towards it. Right, exactly. And finally, God showed us kindness by sending Jesus. What are some ways Jesus showed others that they were valuable? Mm -hmm. How was Jesus kind to others? Ooh, that's a good one. They're going to have some great conversation with these questions. They are. I hope you this guys enjoy good. it. If you guys have any thoughts or feelings towards any of them or you want to share them with us, we love to have conversations. We do. We love to hear from you. So mm -hmm. reach out to us, fcchb.com. Wait, no. kids, kids, what was I thinking? You're giving, that's the website. That's the <laughs> website. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Kids, K-I-D-S at F-C-C-H-B.com. If you mm -hmm. want to look at our website, you, you can, can look at our website. website. It's a nice website. It's a nice website, but okay. we're, we're talking about email. You can email us at kids, K-I-D-S at F-C-C-H-B.com. All right, friends. We'll see you next week, okay? Bye. Bye.